All right, round two. Okay, so I'm shooting this video again. Uh, the first time I actually struggled getting it back together, even though before I started the video, I took it apart, put it back together because it had been a little while since I'd done it, just to make sure uh, I didn't look like a fool on video, and that's exactly what happened. So um, I'm shooting this video, even though I haven't done a uh, any kind of video for YouTube in about three years. Um, I'm doing it off my phone. I'm not fancy. I don't edit. I don't do anything like that. I'm shooting this video for a friend of mine named Tuck uh, in the communist state of California. Um, so he has a Ruger Mark III, um, and he wasn't sure. He had seen a couple videos. He wasn't sure if he had a Mark III or Mark IV, if his was the one that was hard to take apart or not. I looked at it. I told him he had a Mark III. And you can tell easily if you have one that's hard to take apart because it has this back strap that looks like this. Mine is a Mark II competition, same disassembly process. And I told him that I would show him how to take it apart, but because of time constraints, uh, I wasn't able to. So I haven't told him, but I'm shooting this video and I'm going to try and show him on video how to disassemble uh, the Mark II, III, and one. Um a lot of people don't buy these or they're afraid of them because you watch these videos and they say they're awful. Uh, it, it's my opinion that uh, not all guns are designed to be easy to take apart. Um, I think when you add engineering like spe specifics, uh, like, hey, I want this to be light. I want this easy to disassemble. I want this to be whatever specs that you want. The more specs you add into a gun... T to me, from I'm not an engineer, but if I was from an engineering standpoint, it seems like you're you're taking away potentially from something else. So if I make something easy to take apart, I might have been able to make a better gun if it wasn't easier to take apart. Uh, but now because it has to be easier to take apart, I got to sacrifice something. Uh, may or may not be true. It depends on your engineering skills, I assume. But I do not, in short, mind a gun that's a little bit challenging to take apart. I've got Browning Auto 5s. They're great guns. They last forever. Uh, probably one of the best shotguns ever made in a lot of people's opinion, including mine. Uh, and it's gunsmith work to take one of those apart. A lot harder than one of these. These are just kind of finicky. So, with that said, uh, we'll go ahead and start the process. First things first, the difference in mine and his, I have a Mark II, so I have the heel magazine release. Pull the magazine out. There's nothing in the magazine. His will have the push button mag release on the left side. Um, and now I'm going to ensure the weapon is clear. All right, so the gun is clear. So the next thing that I am going to do is I'm going to start by uh, getting inside of this recess and pulling this strap down. You can do that with a paper clip. A lot of people say I'm sure that's way better than what I'm going to do, but I don't have a paper clip. So what I'm going to do is take a stripped out piece of 550 cord. I'm going to stick it in there, loop it around that strap, and just kind of try and grab it and pull it. Once I pull it down, it should come out. Oh, the first thing I didn't do that I messed up on is I did not fire it. So the first thing you want to do is put the weapon on fire, dry fire. Okay. And I could tell because I felt that spring tension. So, um, ensuring that the weapon is a safe direction after you've cleared the gun, obviously. Next thing we do is pull that strap down just like that. It swings out. Now you just kind of want to take it like this and grab it, grab the gun and just pull straight down. Now, if you look what we're doing, there's a pin right here that goes uh, through the lower into the bolt and through the upper portion, retaining the bolt. So we're going to pull that out. You'll see it come out of the hole. Boom, we're coming down with it, and it's out. Now that piece and that process, putting it back together, is really the most difficult part. The next thing we got to do is we have to take the bolt out. So I'm going to turn the weapon upside down, depress the trigger, and then my bolt should slide right out. Now my bolt's out. The next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead, if you feel like doing it, it's not necessary. But if you're going to take it apart this far, uh, you might as well go ahead and take it the rest of the way apart. So what I'm going to do is separate the upper portion from the lower portion. And you can see this recess here. My wife's coming home. Uh, but all you're going to do is take a rawhide mallet. Uh, take a uh, plastic mallet like I have here, 
Uh, and some and some uh, gunsmithing sets, you can get one of these mallets. I wouldn't use the brass side. You could, uh, or the plastic side. I don't like this one because if I was to miss, I'm hitting with a metal shank of the hammer. So I like using this plastic hammer here. Um, and I'm just going to tap this portion right here. And it should just fall right apart. Give it a couple whacks. Boom. You can see it separated. Comes right apart. All right. Now that that's apart, these two portions here, you can clean anything you need to inside of there. I don't think disassembly any further uh, is required unless you have a broken component. Um, and then I'm sure that most of you wouldn't be messing with that anyway. But what you can do is take some oil, take some Q-tips. I love Q-tips. Some people are opposed to them because you could get some of the strings from the Q-tips inside a component, not see it, put it back together. You're inside the firing pin channel and you block the firing pin from being other stuff like that. Just be careful with what you're doing. If you use Q-tips, take a flashlight, uh, just spot around, make sure you didn't leave any debris anywhere. Uh, one of the bigger parts of cleaning too, if you see right here, uh, there is the extractor hole that where the extractor is going to go into. That's going to be probably one of the things that causes you the most problem. So you need to really, really get in there. If you need to take a can of like air duster or something, blow it out, put some oil in there, Q-tip, uh, whatever. You can use a toothpick actually, and that helps get a lot of stuff out of there as well. Um, but just clean that portion really good. Not a cleaning video. Most of you know how to clean. Just a couple of uh, tips. The next thing that we can do. Um, not necessary, but for me, again, if you're going to take the gun apart this far, might as well go ahead and do it, um, is to go ahead and disassemble the bolt, right? 22, uh, is dirty. So, uh, the bolt is probably going to be the dirtiest portion, especially the front face of the bolt with the extractor, uh, the extractor here and then the firing pin. So, uh, we have on here is, uh, this, this little spring portion here which looks like your ejector, uh, potentially. I, I don't really know what it is, but either which way, all you have to do is put like a drift or your finger or anything behind here. Put a little bit of forward pressure on that piece and then lift up and it'll pop right out. Now, as we pop this out, you'll notice that it's flat on the bottom-ish and then it's rounded on top. And just keep note of that when you're putting it back together because the top of the bolt here is rounded as well. So you want to take that rounded portion and make sure that it's on top. Once you've got that apart, you look and you see that there is a drift hole right here. Very easy. You don't have to be scared of anything. Just keep the bolt upright. It's nothing's under spring tension and just push it through. I'll push it through from this side actually so you can see it. Right, it pushes right out and I'll let it fall. Um, boom, now I'll pull my drift out. Now as soon as I pull my drift out, I can see that my firing pin is loose. Boom, you see that fall forward, boom, right there. And then the next thing is going to be, there's a firing pin spring in here. Um, you'll notice on the firing pin spring, it's kind of angled downward. Um, at this point, the bolt is disassembled. We're ready to put it back to, together. Inside of the bolt, uh, let's see. You'll see there's a little uh, channel in there. And then, then in the forward portion of the channel, there's a notch or like another further recess, like right in this area right there. You can kind of see it. Well, that little downward angle here is going to go into that recess. So you just want to get that tip in there and you can just let it drop right down and it should stay where it needs to go. Now, the firing pin, which is the actual portion right here. Well, this whole assembly is a firing pin, but the striking portion is here. You'll see that you have a notch here. That notch is where the spring is going to rest up again. So when this is going forward and back, that's where that spring tension is going to come. The reason I say that is just keep that in mind when you're putting it together. So what I like to do is drop this in kind of to the rear and then push it forward. So now, and then you can kind of push it and you can feel that spring tension. And that means you've kind of got it back together like you want it. Now, one of the things I like to do, if you have it, um, it makes it way easier to put back together on the opposite side, there's holes just like this on the other side. I like to take my drift and put it through. 
until I can get that lined up. And now you see my drift has come through the other side and it's retaining the firing pin under spring tension. Okay. Um, and it's essentially taking the place of this pin, but this pin, because it's the exact same diameter, it can be a little bit more challenging to put in. So now what I can do is kind of pull this drift back through while I'm putting that pin in and they should line up. If they don't, then I can wiggle it around until it goes in. And then now my pin is back in, my drift is out, my bolt is assembled back like it should be under spring tension. Now the last thing that I have to do is put this portion back on. Again, the very easy, you take the rounded portion, the rounded portion just like that goes on top and matches the rounded portion of the bolt. It sets down. You'll notice it's not seated on top of the bolt yet. It's sitting on top. All we have to do is you could really just push it down with your fingers and push it forward and it snaps right down. Again, I'll show you that one more time. And what I like to do is keep my finger on top because this kind of twists around. Boom. You just take your finger, push it forward, and it should snap right down on top of it. Make sure it's centered and your bolts back together. The next thing that we're going to do after we've cleaned everything, put our bolt back together, is put the upper portion and the lower portion back together. So you'll notice inside of here you've got these lugs. Uh, that snap in and all you're going to do is line those up so that lug right there will go into that recess right there put them together now what i personally like to do is i do it on the carpet for this instance my table is protected uh, by a blanket and what i don't want to do is mess up the crown uh, of the muzzle um, but this is soft material so what i want to do is take it and kind of push down and you'll it's it's tight which is good and put it back together by pushing down on it and you'll feel it settle you hear that pop maybe maybe not but mine popped into place i know it's back together okay so the next thing that we're going to do is put the bolt <clears throat> back in now that the upper and lower are together putting the bolt back in it should look like this when you go to put the bolt back in okay it's kind of clear you can see I'm pressing the trigger that sears dropping down is clear now if it looks like this you see you've got that obstruction in the way right in here all right uh, what you can do just depress the trigger you should see it drop down right shake it a little bit and it drops down did it all right there we go we shook it it dropped down you can see that sear again now the bolt should go smoothly in. When you put the bolt back in, that spring portion there is going up and it should slide right in. Of course, here we go with the struggle again. All right, so you can depress the trigger and let it go. I think that's what we just did there. Let's try and replicate that. All right, so we got that, boom. It shake that piece down, we go to put it in and it slides right in, okay. So our bolt's in. <clears throat> now we get to the challenging portion of assembly. Um, now, if I can show you inside of here, there's a good picture of it. There's a piece inside of here that likes to go back and forth. And what we're going to do when we assemble the gun, yep, there it is right there. That's the challenging part. We have to be cognizant of where that is in reference to this piece here. So if you notice that this piece looks like three pieces of metal sandwiched together. One, two, three. We want that tab to get centered with that. Now it just kind of free floats so you can push it around or you can shake it to get it to where it needs to go. But <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and do the challenging part, right? So what we're going to do right now is go ahead and take this component and put it back into the gun. So all we're doing is putting that rounded portion back through like we had it before. Bam. Pops in, comes to the top, easy day, right? Now, the next thing that we want to do is turn the gun upside down. 
depress the trigger, it falls down, and then what we want to do is as it's down like that, we kind of want to lean it downward at an angle like this because we want that pin to fall onto this piece. We don't want it this way. You can kind of hear it moving back and forth. We don't want it this way. We want it to fall back onto this piece. Look inside of there, and I won't be able to show you this with the camera, and then rotate it forward. Now, you'll know that it's back together properly when it stops right here. So you see it's not it's got that spring tension right there that's what you want and then you can go ahead and close you can go ahead and close this it'll lock into place and then you'll know it's back together properly when you turn it up and you can charge the bolt to the rear all right so this is put together properly now what a lot of you will see when you get it back together so we've dry fired. We're going to go ahead and take it apart again. And now if you don't, if you don't get it or you struggle with it while you're putting it together and then you finally get it back together, what I'd recommend to you is figure out what you did right. Because if you get it back together and you struggle with it and you remember that, you might, you might not want to take it apart ever again because you don't want to mess with it. Um, and then you might end up having a gun you don't shoot a whole lot because now it's having issues because it's dirty, but you don't know how to take it apart. So we pull it back apart. Now I'm just going to go through that one process again. We get this back in there. Boom. It pops into place, right? And then we go ahead and tilt the gun upside down, depress the trigger to make sure all those sear components are in there. All right. So I'm going to disassemble this wrong. So remember how I said lean it down like this and then put it together? I'm going to lean it forward and put it together. Now you notice that that part just falls into place. That's because that tab isn't in the indentation that it needs to be. So it just falls into place. No spring tension like I showed you before. We'll go ahead and close it. And now the bolt won't rock to the rear. Okay. Easy fix just like we did before. We just go ahead and pull this back apart. Of course, I'm going to stroke. All right, so now we got that back apart. We don't have to pull this out or anything. All we need to do is lean that back just like this so that tab is sitting. We talked about, and you can kind of see it right here, that center part, but it's on the inside. That little tang that's floating around in the gun is sitting there, and it's centered. We go to close it. No, it's not centered. Let's go ahead and depress the trigger. All right, centered. It's leaning on it, and we get that spring tension that we want right there. Go ahead and close it. Bolt racks to the rear. Weapon on safe. Magazines in. Right. That's how you. Disassemble and reassemble a Ruger Mark 1, 2, and 3. So if you're afraid to buy one of these guns uh, because they're hard to disassemble, I I understand that. If I could get a Mark 4 and it just popped apart with that button on the back and I had the option, cool, right? But at the end of the day, if you can get a good deal on one of these used, uh, I wouldn't be afraid of it. They're really, they're not that bad. Anybody that's ever done a lot of Assembly, disassembly with other firearms. Um, that one's really not that bad. I would just say it's finicky and, and you need to do it or watch somebody do it. Um, Gunrunner6174, I'm signing out. Um, any other videos you guys would like to see, I'd be more than happy uh, to try and do. I do a lot of gun trading and I, I wish that I would have taken those guns that I've gotten, shot and traded and done videos on all of them. Um, but... Whatever. I've got a lot of guns I can do videos on. Um, and uh, maybe I'll start shooting more videos here in the future. Alright, I'm out.